Hey, it's Ashley from Smart Edition Academy. And if you're watching this video, I assume that you want to pass your Accuplace or Math exam. So if you're here and you want to pass, I have some really great tips for you to study and prepare effective and efficiently. Okay, so I'm going to go over some basic tips, then get into a little bit more of the nitty gritty of the Math Accuplacer exam, and we'll end with some practice questions. So if that sounds good, stick around and we'll start with just a few steps to prepare for this math exam. So step number one, I wanna make sure that we're ready to get focused, okay? So studying for math, similar to studying for anything else, you really need to dedicate your energy to it. And sometimes even more so with math, if this is something that maybe in your past you have not had the best relationship with math, right? So we need to get focused. In our daily lives, we are always multitasking, okay? We're always trying to do a million things, Right now, while you're studying for your Accuplacer, in those moments that you take time to study, that's not the time to multitask. So we need to put our phones on do not disturb mode, turn off the television, get somebody to watch the kids, do what you have to do to give yourself some focus time because you'll be able to get a lot more done in a short focus session than you would be able to do studying for an hour while also cooking dinner and trying to listen to a podcast, you know? So we just wanna get focused. So for something as important as this test, like you're taking this for a reason, for something as important as this test, you just need to commit 100% to focusing your energy on this exam when you are taking the time to study. So it's not gonna be forever, it's not gonna be all the time, but for a short period of time, if you could commit 100% to passing this exam and follow some of these tips that I have for you, then you're gonna be in a great place, okay? So step number two, we're gonna create a study plan. So to fit this into your busy life, time management is key, all right? Can you carve out some time in your day to study? Can you wake up 20 minutes earlier? Can you take half of your lunch break and just study for the test? Can you stay up and instead of watching one of your favorite episodes on Netflix, can you take time to study? Okay, so find the time that works for you to study for this exam. So instead of, you know, instead of something that maybe is not really serving you right now and trying to help you get ahead and progress, do the studying for your math exam because that's why you're taking this test, okay? So another tip to creating a study plan to find the time to actually do the studying is to get an accountability partner, okay? So can you find someone who can hold you accountable? Maybe it's someone else who's taking this exam or something similar, or maybe it's just someone who you know will be straight with you, will be honest with you and say, hey, I noticed that you didn't take any time to study this week. How can we fit that in? And just someone who can have a really honest conversation with you, okay? So an accountability partner is really important for something like this when we have a million things that we're trying to juggle, okay? And last but not least, we need to choose quality study materials, okay? So in order to prepare efficiently, we need to have good materials to study. If not, we're gonna be kind of all over the place, right? Like if you're trying to study and you're just Googling random websites, pulling up random videos, you may not be getting all the content that you need, and you may also be getting some content that you don't need. So choosing quality study materials will help you, okay? And with that, I also wanna add that if you know your learning style, that can be really helpful to study. So for example, do you learn better by reading or watching a video? Or maybe you just prefer to listen to somebody, right? Are you more of a visual learner or a tactile learner who needs to use their hands? So there's lots of different options for courses and study materials that can help fit the way that you learn. At Smart Edition Academy, we actually have courses that offer multiple opportunities for different learning styles. So we have videos that help go over practice examples or explain content, while we also have written lessons that are educational and allow you to read and go at your own pace. So lots of different options for you in that course. So it's just important that the materials that you choose are specific to the Accuplacer math exam, okay, have the correct content, and also just fit your learning style. Okay, so as you start studying, here are a few tips to guide you. So we just talked about learning style a little bit. So how do you learn best? Reading, watching, doing, maybe a combination of the three. A lot of us lie somewhere in the middle. So 
Once you find out or you determine your learning style, maybe you know from going to school previously, or maybe you just intrinsically know like, yeah, listening to somebody talk on and on and on doesn't really help me so much. But when I can watch a video and see what's happening, that's really helpful, right? So just knowing that about yourself can be really important. So say, for example, you're a video learner. Can you find a YouTube channel that has all of the different content for the AccuPlacer exam. So on our Smart Edition Academy YouTube channel, we do have lots of little snippets of AccuPlacer math questions that you can go and you can watch and you can just have these in little digestible pieces so you can go through examples at your own pace when you have five, 10 minutes or when you really have that time to sit down and study for a focused 30 minutes to an hour, okay? Maybe you're more of a social learner. You like to be with other people and interact and have a community. You could join a Facebook group, okay? Have someone, you should find a Facebook group where there's people who are taking this exam and providing accountability, right? That word is coming up again, so accountability. Um, there's also a link actually in the bottom of this video uh, in the description. If you find the AccuPlacer course in there that has, like I was mentioning, the educational lessons, it has the videos, okay? so. All of that from Smart Edition Academy is linked below, but that's not the only course out there, right? If that doesn't feel like the best fit for you, finding one that does, that provides what you need for your learning style will be so helpful for you while you're studying, okay? We also do offer, if this is just for math, but we also do offer all the other test topics as well. So if you are taking more than one content area, that you may find that to be helpful. So then you have some continuity, right? Like you know what to expect from your math course and then it's similar for the other topics. So as we are studying, right? We've determined our learning style. We have our study materials. Now we're gonna get familiar with the type of math that's on the AccuPlacer, okay? <clears throat> so you want your energy to be focused on the right content so that we can study efficiently. So there are three different topics, all right? So there's the arithmetic topic, which goes over pretty much like basic computation, um, order of operations, estimation rounding, all of the things I have listed here and more. This is more of the basic understanding of, do you know these topics in math, right? A little bit more basic. Can you do basic arithmetic within the realm of mathematics? Then we have the quantitative reasoning, algebra, and statistics section. So this is a little more in depth with some rational number rules, can be a little bit more abstract. Exponents, solving algebraic equations, as well as some probability, probability and statistics and some geometry. Okay, and then the last section, the AAF section is advanced algebra and functions. So this is some more advanced topics you may have seen in, in an algebra or an advanced algebra class in high school or in college where there is factoring and solving quadratics, radical and rational equations, and trigonometry. Sorry, this was supposed to say radical. Okay, so that's like square roots, for example. Right, so those are the different type of topics that you may see. So when you are studying, you're gonna wanna really zone in on the specific type of math questions that you need help with. So are there certain topics that you struggle more with? So having study materials that allow you to break it up into the content topics, these three different sections of your math exam will be really important, okay? And there's lots of different topics in each category. Again, this is not an exhaustive list here, but it's just an idea to get you thinking. Okay, and then my best advice for you is to take practice tests. So this is an example of what our practice test looks like to start on the Smart Edition Academy course, okay? So this is just a way to really figure out what do the questions look like on the AccuPlacer and then which kind of topics, again, do I need to really zone in on and study? So we have linked a free online practice test from our course below. So feel free to check that out and see if that works for you. And tests like this are really great because they give you an idea of what type of math to expect as well as a diagnostic report for you specifically on what you did well on, what you need a little more practice with, and then you can go and practice those types of questions, okay? So you know what types of questions to spend your time on. So there is, again, no shame in getting help, okay? So this is a big reminder, there's no shame in getting help. Find support 
find your community of people that can help you, find your online course that can help you, ask for help, ask your partners, ask your family to hold you accountable. Because I know just as well as anybody else, when we have a lot going on in our lives, it's hard to focus on one thing at a time. But you are here for a reason. This AccuPlacer exam is important to you. So you have to just take the time to really focus. And with math specifically, the best way to do that is with repetition and practice. Okay, so let's try a couple practiced questions together today to wrap up our video. So in the arithmetic section, this is a question straight from one of our practice exams from our course. So this question says, change 5 to a decimal and simplify completely. So in the arithmetic section, we are just doing some computation, okay? And we can use a calculator on the AccuPlacer. So this will be really helpful. If we need to take a fraction and turn it into a decimal, what's important to know here is that 5 over 11, this fraction bar is really just meaning division. So if I could do 5 divided by 11, my calculator will give me this 0 0.4545445 and it's going to keep going on and on and on forever. So how do we demonstrate that, right? All of these options are a little more concise. How do we show that? So notice how the 45 is the thing that is repeating. So we just need to write 0 0.45 and put a bar over it. That shows me that that is going to repeat over and over and over again for forever. So to change 5 11 to a decimal, we just divide. And in this one, we had to then just remember how to use that bar at the top to show a repeating decimal. Okay, so here's a type of question you may see on your arithmetic AccuPlacer math exam. Let's check out the next question. So in the QAS section, okay, quantitative reasoning, algebra, and statistics, here is a statistics question to try. In a deck of 20 number cards, cards 1 through 5 are green, cards 6 through 10 are red, 11 through 15 are yellow, and 16 through 20 are blue. Describe the intersection of an odd number and blue cards. So in statistics, intersection means where they overlap. Okay, so we're going to look for some overlap between these categories. So odd numbers, if we remember odd numbers are 1, 3, 5, 7, go all the way up until the last one we'd have would be 19. So 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, right? We can go all the way up to 19. The blue cards, it says, are 16 through 20. So what would be the intersection here? Well, it would be something that's in both of these categories. So 16 is not odd, but 17 is. 18 is not odd, but 19 is. And 20 is not odd. So the only overlap, the only intersection, would be 17 and 19. Okay, so there's an example of a statistics question. And lastly, let's just end with an advanced algebra question. So the area of a circle is 18 square inches. Find the circumference of the circle to the nearest tenth of an inch, and we're going to use 3.14 for pi. So in order to do a question like this about your circles, we need to know two formulas. We need to know that circumference equals, there's two different ways we could write this. We could write this as 2 pi r, or we could write this as pi times diameter. That is because diameter is equal to 2 times the radius. Area for a circle is equal to pi times the radius squared. So let's see which one we need to start with. Area of a circle is 18 square inches. So I'm going to take my area formula and plug in 18 for the area. We're using 3.14 for pi. And then I need to find the radius. That's what I have left over. So the first thing I do is divide 18 by 3.14. I'm just going to round to a couple of decimal places here. I get 5.732 equals the radius squared, and when I take the square root of that, I'm going to get that my radius is approximately 2.4. Okay? Now I have to ask myself, does that answer my question, or what am I trying to find again? So find the circumference of a circle to the nearest tenth of an inch. So circumference, either one of these formulas, I'm just going to use the first one since I already know the radius. So I'll just plug in 2. Remember, we're using 3.14 for pi, and then the radius is 2.4. So from here, I can just plug this into my calculator. 2 times 3.14 times 2.4 gives me 
oops, 15.072. Now, can I round that to the nearest tenth? Well, the seven in the hundreds place tells me to round up, so I should get 15.1 as my circumference, which I see as an option right here. Okay, so there are a couple example problems. If you found these helpful and if you want more, okay, make sure you check out the links in the description of this video for our AccuPlacer courses, our online, free online practice tests. We have lots of videos for you to help you study on our YouTube channel and our TikTok. So check us out so that you can find some more specific questions for your AccuPlacer exam. And I wish you the best of luck. Let me know in the comments if you want any more of these types of questions or what types of videos would be helpful for you in your studying. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.